Now let's uh, make things a little bit more interesting and um, try and animate a, uh, a bunch of icons. Let's uh, do three. So I'll take these three icons and they're supposed to fly out from underneath uh, David's chat head. I'll drag all of them into the layer stack and resize them. So a little bit smaller than David's head. Drag them down here and this is where the animation will be. The apps one is going to fly to the top. So I'll call that top apps. The last app one is going to fly out to the right. And I'll call that right and then last app. And the messenger one is going to fly out to the left. And I'll name it appropriately. We want them to move in the same way, but not to the same destination. So I'll create a new layer and call it um, a new adjustment layer and call it control. And so that should contain all the information about the animation, but except for one thing, and that is the uh, destination. We need to do two things to this control layer in order to make it um, ready for animating the other layers. The first one is we want to animate a slider. And a slider is just, it's just a way to animate between two values. I'll drop. I'll dump a keyframe here, U to twirl out the modified features as a keyframe here. And then I'll just move one, two, three, four frames, three. It's going really fast. So three frames is probably the right thing to do. And then I want the slider to change into a value of a hundred. As you can see, it goes from zero, 33, 66 and 100 but that's not all i want it to bounce like inertial bounce so i'll alt click the stopwatch and i can see that i can edit a script here and that script is really just a javascript expression so whatever the javascript ex expression is is what after effects will use as the value for the slider now I have this script here that is from Motion Graphics Exchange. There's probably a bunch of other scripts out there, but I'll use this one. And I'll just go to the expressions um, field and paste it in. And that's almost all I need. I just want to make it, I want to tweak it a little bit. You can do that as well, it's fun. And now it's ready. The control layer now knows everything it needs to know in order to be able to animate the other uh, layers. Now let's tell the other layers that they should be guided by the control layer. And the way we do that is by pressing P, so I'll just start with the right one. I'll press P and then I'll right click here and say separate dimensions, because we only want to animate the X position for this one. So I'll make a note, I'll make a mental note of, I'll actually copy 203.5, because we're gonna need that in a minute. So. I'll alt click the stopwatch to get to an expression. And an easy and fast way of writing an expression is just to take the pick whip uh, and drag it onto the value you want this value to follow. So I'll click the control to reveal the slider control up here, take the pick whip and drop it onto the slider. So now it follows whatever the slider's value is, the value we just animated before, and moves in nicely like that. But we want it to you know, start from where it sat originally. So I'll just take the expression and plus the number I just copied by pasting it. And so now it slides nicely out from here. It has the inertial bounds, not too much, not too little. And then we'll do the same, th same thing for the left, the one that goes out to the left. Actually, it's so much alike that I'll just take the X position here, copy it, open this one, P, position, separate dimensions, take the X position, oops, X position here, and I'll just paste it, because it's the same. And now they both move out here, so I'll reveal the expression, and since it just needs to do the same thing but the other way, like it needs to travel the exact opposite way. I'll add a minus in front of this expression. 
so that they both travel to each side. Okay, now I'll make a mental note of the Y position, because now we need to animate the last one, the one that needs to fly up. I'll press P for position, separate the dimensions, I'll make a note of this one here, just like I made a note of the X one before. Alt click the stopwatch. Click the control there, so I reveal this one up here. Pickwick drop on the slider. And then I need the, the um, position, the Y position that I just copied, so I'll paste that Y position. And it goes here, and we need it to move upwards, so I'll add a minus in front of it. And now they all just slide out nicely here. The last thing we need to add to this is a is a transparency effect. So we basically need it to be completely uh, transparent and then fade into 100% um, visible. So again, the control layer is the the guy with the power, so I'll just add a uh, transparency and opacity keyframe here at the same place as I was uh, animating this slider. Um, so I'll just add this opacity keyframe here, and that should be a zero, and it'll add to a hundred. And so nothing changes now until I say to all the other layers. Let me just make some more space here. I'll make a, an expression keyframe here. Uh, I'll go into expression mode. Take the pick whip, move it up to opacity. And now you can see it fades into 100% visible. Right, so same thing for this. I'll just twirl this one up. Same thing for the right one. So T, Alt click, pick whip. On twirl. Click the left one, T, Alt click, and pick whip. And then they nicely animate into existence. And last thing we need to do now is to make sure that the uh, icons actually fly out from underneath instead of from on top of the chat head. So I'll just move the chat head on top of the of the icons. And here we go.